Hello and welcome. Today's topic is the further development in embryonic period of life at 4th week to the 8th week. Now, first of all, Alan Toys, as you can see in this photo. What is this? In some textbooks, you will find the development of Alan Toys occurs in 2nd week, in some textbooks 3rd week, in some textbook 4th week. Now, whenever it develops, it doesn't matter. The point is, this is the structure of Alan Toys and it is actually is a protrusion or it's an outpouching from the yolk set towards the connecting stalk. It is directly attached with the cloacal membrane and it is partly absorbed by the primitive urinary bladder and the remaining part is uh, remain as a uracus. Now this remaining part of the uracus converts into median umbilical ligament later. Okay. Now at the beginning of the fourth week, you are getting four components ectodermal differentiation, mesodermal differentiation, then embryonic folding and lastly endodermal differentiation. Okay. Now first of all, ectodermal differentiation. What happens as you can see in this photo, this ectoderm divides into two parts. One is surface ectoderm, another is neuroectoderm. From the neuroectoderm, entire central nervous system and autonomic ganglia arises and from the surface ectoderm, which is already connected with the buccopharyngeal membrane and cloacal membrane in my last video i told you that so from the buccopharyngeal membrane epidermis hair nail sebaceous glands sweat glands olfactory pit optic components branchial clefts epidermal lining of entire face neck along with the rathakis pouch pituitary gland salivary glands mammary glands these things arises from the buccopharyngeal membrane and from the cloacal membrane i already told you that in my earlier videos that every components of anal triangle and urogenital triangle arises okay and now the mesodermal differentiation as you can see in this photo the part of the mesoderm presents inside we call it intraembryonic mesoderm and the part of the mesoderm presents outside we call it extraembryonic mesoderm from the extraembryonic mesoderm you are getting mainly nothing all the superficial lining or the superficial epithelium arises from this extraembryonic mesoderm and subcutaneous tissue so basically nothing important the main component is our intraembryonic mesoderm this intraembryonic mesoderm divides into three parts. One is paraxial mesoderm, another is intermediate mesoderm, another is lateral plate mesoderm. Now, paraxial mesoderm, it extends from the either part of the notochord to the intermediate mesoderm and it extends up to the precordial plate. Now, this paraxial mesoderm condenses and forms a horn like mass, okay, which consists of lots and lots of multipotent cells. This entire structure together we call it somatomeres, which ultimately forms somites. What are somites? We'll talk about later, not now. Now, from the intermediate mesoderm, now from the intermediate mesoderm, we are getting both kidneys along with the testis in male and the ovaries in female. During mesodermal condensation, a pericardial bar forms in this lateral plate mesoderm area along with the pericardial sac okay and after that this lateral plate mesoderm divides itself into two parts one is somatopleuric layer and there is splanchno pleuric layer so this somatopleuric layer it is also known as parietal layer and the splanchno pleuric layer is also known as visceral layer okay so common sense when all the organs arises inside of our body it covered by visceral layer and parietal layer so our lungs livers then peritoneum spleen heart kidneys every strut every important organs are covered by parietal layer and visceral layer now from this somatopleuric layer dermis pectoral girdle pelvic girdle skeletal muscles of upper limb and lower limb arises okay and from this splanchno pleuric layer muscles of heart smooth muscles of entire gut and smooth muscles of our entire respiratory system arises now the third component is the embryo folding what happens due to the small pace inside the uterus and due to the curvy structure of the uterus the flat embryo the flat embryo becomes folded and due to the rapid growth of the entire structure it creates head component tail component and two lateral component so all these structures are carved okay due to the embryo folding primitive gut arises now during embryo folding at the end of the fourth week peritoneal cavity also arises and the fourth component is our endodermal differentiation what happens the embryo folding the endoderm gets folded and ultimately joins together and forms a tube like structure and from this 
endodermal tube the entire gi tract i mean the primitive gut is uh, arises so basically the embryo folding and the endodermal differentiation occurs simultaneously so entire length of the endodermal tube we divided into three part initial part is foregut the middle part is mid gut and the last part is hind gut or hind gut okay so up to this much is part a and see you soon till then bye